You want to preserve your garden harvest. You've heard it's easy. I talk about it all the time. But what does it really mean? What options do you have to preserve your food? Well, join me today as I share with you 13 different ways to preserve your garden harvest. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and almost 20 years ago, I became a master food preserver through the Extension Service. It has since been renamed Master Food Safety Advisor, but the whole point of the program was to learn how to preserve food, and I think it plays very closely to growing your own food. So I've used all 13 of these methods to preserve my garden harvest. I think it's important that we understand the different ways that we can preserve our vegetables and fruit because then we can start to focus on what we like best. And there's really only about a handful of these preservation methods that I use on a regular basis. But I use them a lot, and I preserve a lot of my garden harvest. Now, being a certified Master Food Safety Advisor right up front, I must say that some of these methods of preservation will require additional education. You must have a recipe, you must do the processing correctly, and you must follow all guidelines to ensure that what you preserve is safe to eat. The first method of preserving your harvest is one that you're probably already doing, but it's so ubiquitous we don't really think of it as a dedicated method of food preservation. It's freezing. It's freezing your harvest. It's one of those things that seems so easy, but if you take a few extra steps, you can really get some long-term storage of your harvest. A lot of what we grow is easy to freeze, like these burgundy beans. These are the type of things that will freeze, freeze well, and that you can store for a long period of time. But there's some extra things to consider. With a lot of what we're freezing, like these beans, there are enzymes that will affect how well they hold up to freezing. So something like this needs to be blanched before we freeze it. And that's simply submersing this in boiling water for about a minute and then freezing it. That will allow it to last a lot longer. And if you store something like this in a vacuum seal bag, it can last many, many months. But there's a lot of what we grow that really shouldn't be frozen, like this cucumber. Cucumbers lose a lot of the moisture, their texture, and get completely mushy if we freeze them. But while it's something we do just about every day, freezing our food, recognizing that some of what we harvest freezes well and others don't, is really where the additional education comes in. For the crops growing in my hugoculture bed, I use a second form of food preservation. That's cold storage or cold cellaring. Many of the things that we grow, like potatoes and onions and root crops, can be stored for many, many months if they're kept in a cool environment, ideally around 40 degrees Fahrenheit with a high humidity, while others, like this delicata winter squash and these sugar pie pumpkins prefer to have a drier humidity and temperatures closer to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Root cellars can be dug into the ground for the first method of cold cellaring. What I do is I keep these winter squashes in my basement in the coolest spot and they'll last for many, many months. One of my favorite ways to preserve my harvest is by pickling. Now within this category are two preservation methods, pickling using vinegar or pickling by fermentation. 
you can call this my pickling bed. On this half of the bed, I have Boston pickling cucumbers, and on this half of the bed, I have peppers. And I use both methods for the cucumbers and for the peppers. With vinegar, you're going to get what you think of as probably a traditional pickle. It's what you buy at the store. But when you add salt to these vegetables, it creates an environment that the lactobacillus bacteria loves. And that bacteria creates lactic acid. The lactic acid is what preserves crops like this. So whether it's vinegar or lactic acid, we're seeking to create a very low pH environment that will preserve our crops and taste pretty good along the way. Another preservation method that I love is jelly making. I grow raspberries and blackberries for the sole purpose of making jams and jellies. The high sugar content and the low pH, either because of the acidity of the fruit or because we add something like lemon juice, will allow these type of fruits to last for months and months. I even have some jars of jelly a couple years old that I continue to use. It's a great way to get the fresh garden flavor. Sure, it's sweet, but it's a great way to preserve the fruits that you grow. I preserve a lot of my harvest by drying. Within this category are three different types of preservation. The first being air drying. And this is how I preserve my herbs like I have in this bed. By simply harvesting the herbs like this sage and this thyme, I can dry this, save it for many months, and enjoy the delicious flavor for quite a long time. These are jars of some of the herbs that I just harvested, hung up, and allowed to air dry. This is mint, this is sage, this is tarragon, and this is thyme. I use a lot of thyme. And this is a bag of dill weed. I ran out of jars. Another way to dry is dehydrating. These are two of the dehydrators I use. This model sends warm air vertically, and this model sends warm air horizontally. And you can dehydrate just about anything you're growing in the garden. I've dehydrated root vegetables and fruits and even mushrooms. I find the air drying to be a better method for me for the herbs but you can use a dehydrator to dry your herbs as well. For the squash, I'm using a third method of drying. The method I'm using to preserve that squash is the third way to dry your harvest. That's freeze drying with a freeze dryer. Freeze drying provides the ability to store your food for decades, 20 to 25 years. It removes all of the moisture from your harvest and is really the best way to get that long-term preservation. The nice thing about freeze drying is it gives you options. I'm planning on making chips out of that squash, like potato chips, but squash chips using the freeze dryer. Or I could take the same freeze dried squash and reconstitute it with water and then use it in all the recipes that I would normally use the squash in. A very common method of preserving our harvests for over 100 years is canning. And within this category are two different preservation methods, water bath canning and pressure canning. And much of it depends on the food that we're preserving, the harvest. Water bath canning in different size pots is suitable for foods with high acid, a low pH. So you can can tomatoes, you can can your pickles, you can can your jellies to seal a jar and make them shelf stable for many, many months. But if you want to can low acid foods, those with high pH like the beans and the corn, you're going to have to use a pressure canner. The reason is because of the temperatures involved and because of the bacteria 
that could pose a problem with our food safety. In a pressure canner, the temperature gets up to 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is enough to kill the bacteria and more importantly, the spores that can cause us to get sick and potentially even die. The water bath canning only comes up to boiling, so the temperatures aren't high enough to kill the spores in particular, but the acid will. So depending on what you want to preserve and whether it's high acid or low acid, these are two methods to consider. A method of preservation that is often used for the herbs is infusion. You take your fresh harvest and you take the leaves and put them into vinegar or oil and allow them to sit for usually a period of days or weeks. And the amazing flavors of your herbs are infused into that liquid. We're not preserving the actual leaves. Instead, we're preserving the flavor. And then that vinegar or oil can be used in a variety of recipes in our kitchen, especially in a nice vinaigrette. That's the way I like to do it. Another preservation method that's been practiced for centuries is immersion. It's taking fruit and immersing it in alcohol. Now, we don't do it so much anymore as a preservation method. Instead, we might take lemons or peaches and put it into our vodka to flavor the vodka. But instead, look at it the other way around. It's a great way to preserve those same peaches or lemons because the alcohol deals with all of that harmful bacteria and the food will definitely be safe to eat. You've probably had cherries that were immersed in brandy. If you have fruit, and you have alcohol, immersion can be a great way to preserve that fruit for a long time coming. And it's a great way to enjoy it when you finally have the opportunity. A preservation method that's been done for thousands of years really isn't done much these days. And that's salting or brining your harvest. It can actually work pretty well with some of what we grow, like corn and beans. You take the harvest and you just put it into salt, or you put it into a salty brine, and it's different than fermentation. The salt kills bacteria and keeps additional bacteria from growing. So it's one of the most effective ways of preserving your harvest. Now, you are left with very salty food, but usually with a good rinse or a soaking, you can get most of that salt out and then cook it and enjoy the fresh harvest months after you first harvested it. Now, I'll put a link below to some of the videos that I've already made that show you different preservation methods, or you can watch one of these now. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening and preservation. Mm -hmm.